All right. Three, two, one, go. Welcome back, guys, to Jared the Journeyman. So on today's video and the next couple of videos in this series, I'm going to go over some commonly question some common questions on the journeyman's test. These questions have been may or may not have been um, seen multiple times in different states. I've taken multiple state tests. I've talked to a lot of people that have taken a specific state test and these questions are on or seem to kind of show up on the test. So I'd like to kind of get you guys introduced and used to these te uh, test questions. And when we're going through this, I'm going to give you article references and you guys need to highlight those because so so when you're studying, you can go back and, and kind of refresh. Also, if you need to stop or rewind the video and get that, get some information we're about to go over, go up, feel free to do that. And um, if you get something out of this, guys, do me a solid. Give me a give me a subscribe and hit the bell notification because I am going to be sending out more of these videos and you are going to need to catch these videos and study for the test. So that being said, let me share a screen with you. Um, let's get going here. Cool. And we're going here. Let me move me down a little bit. And uh, so we've got 10 questions. This is video number one. First question, what is the maximum rated rating allowed for the overcurrent protective device for a single phase 208 volt, 3200 watt non-motor operated appliance? That's a lot of verbiage, guys. That's a lot of verbiage. So for the first one, it's a uh, 25 amps. So we go to NEC 2 uh, 422.11 E3, and we do a little um, Ohm's Law. So we take the 3200 watts divided by 208, which equals 15.38 um, amps. And then in four, uh, 422.11 E3 tells us we take up to 150% of the non-motor operated appliances. And we come out to 23.8. With 23.8, we round up to 25 amps because if you go to table 240.6a, that is one of the common overcurrent protection devices, fuses, or breakers. So with that one, a little, little um, Ohm's Law, and then we go to NEC. Let's go to the next one. A frame of a portable generator shall not be required to be connected to grounding electrode if, and I will fix that, if blank. So what they're going to do on this question, guys, is they're going to give you a whole bunch of other, it's not just going to be a one word question. It's going to be a multiple, like a sentence or something. So we're going to grounding. Be careful. Don't get caught up on portable generators. We're talking about grounding. Grounding is 250.34A, and it's the normal non-current carrying parts of the equipment. Grounding terminals of the receptacles are connected to the generator frame, and the generator supplies only equipment mounted on the generator. So that's your answer. That's just like uh, A or B or C. There's multiple, multiple uh, options to to pick when you're um, testing on this question. Next question. What is the minimum size of a three aug THWN conductors allowed in a, in a two inch EMT that is over 24 inches long? All right, guys, first off, we need to know it's over 24 inches long. That means we cannot um, load it up to 60% because if it's less than 60% in chapter one, Chapter 9, Table 1 or Table 2, it tells us that if it's less than 60%, we can go, I mean, if it's less than 24 inches long, we can go up to 60%. So um, we know it's um, greater than 24 inches, so that means 40%. 
or, or, or more depending on the conductor size. So the answer is five annex C table C one. So make sure in that table, you look up EMT and then work your numbers across from there. Next one, what is the minimum calculated service load for lighting, including small appliance and laundry circuits for an 1,875 square foot dwelling unit? All right, guys, this is what we're doing. We're, we're calculating the service load for a house. So this is all the information you're going to need to know. First off, the answer is 5,493.75 VA. How do we get to that number? Go to NEC 220.12. And within that, it says for a service dwelling, single or multifamily, you calculate three VA per square foot. It'll always be that, guys, three VA per square foot for a multi, a single or multi-service um, family dwelling unit, sorry. And then, so we take, we take 1875 and we multiply it times three. We take that, put that answer, put that to the side, put that number to the side. We also know that we're required to have two small appliance circuits within that dwelling unit. That means the required two circuits in your kitchen that's where this comes from, and it's at 1,500 VA per circuit, so two of them is 3,000 VA, and that's in NEC 21052A. Then we are also required to have one laundry circuit because it's asking for it right up here, one laundry circuit, and that's at 1,500 VA, and that's in NEC 21052B, as in Bravo, so we take three times this, then we add 3,000 because we know this is one circuit and we need two. Then we add another 1,500, which is four um, to these two because we know we're required to have one laundry circuit within the house. That's That's a washer circuit. Dryers are not required to be in a house, so don't get caught up on that. So we take that number and then we go to table 220.42. And it says that we take the first 3000 VA at 100%. So we take we take this number right here and subtract 3000. The remainder of that number, we take 35% of it. So multiply it times 0.35. And the remainder will be 2,493.75. Now we take the 3,000 that we took out, the first 100% that we took out, the 3,000, and then we add the remaining 2,493.75 right in here, and we get a total of 5,493.75 VA. So there's where we got this answer right here. Guys, those steps will always be the same. Three times the square footage plus add another 4,500, which includes your two required small appliance circuits and your laundry circuit. Take that number, take out the first 3,000 VA, set it to the side. The remainder, if it's, and there's a, inside that um, table there, there is a maximum, but usually the remainder is at 35%. Multiply that out. Remember, Add that back to the 3,000 and you get the answer. Um, there's a lot of little steps that you could forget. So practice that one. Next question. Power supply service drop operating at 0 to 750 volts running above and parallel to communication service drops shall have a minimum separation of blank between two services at the pole when the ungrounded conductors are insulated. Excuse me. So when the hots are insulated. What we got to do is service communi uh, communication service drops is what we got to go back to the keyword index and look that up. If you don't know the answer, the answer is 40 inches and you need to go to 800.44A4 for that answer. So in the keyword index, communication service drops, 
that'll send you here and you'll find the answer there. But right there, go ahead and highlight 40 inches. All right, storage batteries used as a source of power for emergency systems shall be suitable rating. Rating and capacity supply and maintain the total load for a minimum period of blank minutes. So batteries is what they're wanting and emergency systems because you got to have 90 minutes for people to get out of a building. And that's at 700.12C, 90 minutes. So go ahead and highlight, find 700.12C, 90 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me, next one. Receptacles and attachment plugs within hazardous location of a healthcare facility shall be listed for use in blank locations. All right, guys, what they're asking is within a hospital, within the hazardous locations, um, what is the listing for the location? So healthcare facilities, we should know, is in 517. So in your keyword index, go back to healthcare facilities, you'll find 517, and then receptacle ratings or listings in hazardous locations. And it'll give you class one, group C, class one, group C. That's in 517.61A5. Go ahead and get that highlighted right there, 517.61A5. All right, next one. Cables approved for direct burial and routed under one or two family dwelling driveways shall be buried to a depth not less than blank inches. Guys, let's not guess on that one. If you have a tabbed, um, if you have a tabbed, no, it's gonna show up. All your tabs on your on your um code book, one of those tabs is burial depths. So if you don't know that, go back keyword index, look at burial depths, and that'll take you to table to uh table 300.5 and our Answer is 18 inches. Next one. What minimum size copper equipment grounding conductor is required for a branch circuit rated at 110 amps? So they're asking for us to size the equipment grounding conductor. That is in 240. I mean, I'm sorry, 250. Woo, 250. And if you, again, if you have that tab, those tabs on your book, you have a tab for that, 250.122. Now, you need to highlight 250.122, but mainly you have to highlight in that title, Equipment Grounding Conductor. Equipment Grounding Conductor. And if you, if you want to, make a little note off to the side of that table and have it based off of overcurrent protection or based off of breaker um, size. And that's what that's for. Also, if it didn't say copper here, we will always fall back to assume that it's copper unless stated aluminum. So be careful. They like switching that up on that. Um, if it's not stated anything, we're assuming copper. Next question. An electric water heater is supplied by 10 AUG XHHW aluminum conductors. What is the maximum rating allowed for the overcurrent device protecting this circuit? Guys, don't get caught up with, with a whole bunch of all this stuff, okay? 25 amps is your answer, and you can find that in 240.4D6. Make sure you highlight that, 240.4D6. 25 amps. Guys, that was 10 questions. And that's just an example of what I have to offer you guys. If you guys are interested in joining my um, private Facebook group, The Grid, we go over this stuff. Um, we have multiple, multiple people in there that are attempting to take their tests, that are studying to take their tests, that have questions and aren't 
satisfied with what Facebook is offering us. If you go on those other Facebook groups, um, they will pound you to death on questions. Every once in a while, there'll be some good guys on there that will actually answer it. But other ones, their egos get in the way and forget how it was when it was when they were in your position uh, trying to study for your test. So there is a QR code below. Um, you can sign up for that. There is a monthly subscription. Once I receive that, that you have signed up, I will invite you to the group and then feel free. Feel free to get on there, ask questions, um, watch the videos, um, go through the questions that are posted on the group and go from there. Guys, that's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching. Again, do me a solid. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification because I am going to be putting out more of these videos and you'll be wanting to know when they come out. So that's all I have for now. Guys, be safe out there and we'll catch you next time.